Box office top 10 at 15, Interstellar. You know, still astonishing. And uh, if it's going to be seen anywhere, should definitely be seen in a, in a cinema. Dragon Keepers at 14. Uh, I enjoyed it, liked the animation, driving me mad to think who the voice cast were. Because of course, of course, it's Bill Nye. Uh, Deadpool and Wolverine is at 13. <sighs> Finally out of the top 10 um, after 11 weeks, has taken a staggering amount of money. Apparently people enjoy it, don't understand why. Never Let Go at 12. Which is an interesting atmospheric horror thriller in which uh, people are in a house in the woods to which they must remain attached by a piece of wood from which they must never let go. Megalopolopolis is at number 11. Megaflopolis, am I right? This is the second week and it's out of the top 10 for Francis Ford Coppola's $120 million folly and not even grand folly at that. One of the worst films I have ever seen. And incidentally, it's been lovely hearing from the Coppola fans. Um, Thank you very much. Have a nice life. Have they been warm in their... In, are they basically saying, I understand that you have a point which I disagree with politely? Yes, they have. That's, it's, that's, exactly, that's exactly what it's been like, yeah. Number 10, A Different Man is... Oh, we don't have any correspondence on, on Mega, Megaflopolis. I no. thought we were... Oh, okay, fine. No. A Different Man I really liked. I thought Different Man was really surprising. I thought Adam Pearson was terrific in it. I thought it negotiated a complicated story, you know, with, with wit and verve and uh, yeah it was it was a real surprise and um, uh, there is some megaflopolis conversation a, a little bit later on but not oh, I see. In, in this particular okay. uh, bit uh, number 9 star wars episode 6 return of the jedi 40th anniversary i mean the uh, my suspicion is that the star wars theatrical re-releases will continue to bring people in forever and ever because there is an entire audience that only ever saw them on the small screen so as long as they continue to be on the big screen people will continue to go 200% Wolf is at number eight. Neither you nor I saw 100% Wolf. I have seen 200% Wolf, didn't understand very much of it, um, but I did check with the press notes. They said it doesn't matter if you haven't seen the first one. I hadn't, and I still didn't understand what was going on. Number seven here, number 18 in the States is Lee. I'm really pleased at how well this is done. This is its fourth week in the top 10. I think it peaked around number two or number three. This is Kate Winslet's kind of passion project. Um, again, I did an onstage with... Kate Winslet at the Newland Film House about this because it's a film that she had sort of poured her heart and soul into. It's a story of a photographer who takes pictures from the front line of World War II and the the impact that that has on her life. And I thought that Kate Winslet did a brilliant job uh, in the lead role. And as I said, it is it is a project into which she threw her heart and soul, and you can really tell. UK number six is Despicable Me Four. What the- UK five uh, number sixteen in the states is The Outrun. If you haven't listened to it already, listen to Simon's interview for The Outrun because it was really interesting hearing about how the film came about and the fact that Sir Ronan's partner basically said to her, here is a book that you, you are going to need to do. This, this, is, this is the book for you. And it's fascinating discovering that and then watching the film and then, you know, then, then seeing how that story plays out. And of course, famously not the first film ever shot on Orkney, but possibly the first film ever shot on the island off the island off Orkney. Yes, Papa Westry, I think it was Papa called. Westry. Uh, the Substance is at number four, number nine in America. I, I mean, I'm so excited about The Substance. I think it's my favourite film of the year so far. Um, brilliant that it's doing so well. I know that uh, early on, some distributors were kind of shy of putting it out because they thought it's just too extreme. The fact that it's in its third week now and it's at number four means that it has found an audience. Uh, the press reports about walkouts have just kind of added to the to the charm. I think Coralie Fajas has done a brilliant job with it. And it's I just think it's you, you have to see it. It's, it's one of the films of the year. No, I won't. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I, I I take your recommendation. Okay, uh, three here, five in the US. Speak no evil. Um, a remake of a film that we had reviewed uh, earlier on uh, on this show, which which basically told a dark story about two families stuck together with each other. This is a remake with James McAvoy, which basically plays out the first film and then bolts on a final act in which it all turns into straw dogs, and I think it does it rather well. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice is at number two, three in the States. I liked it. I mean, it's not Beetlejuice, but it is 
superior to a lot of Tim Burton's most more recent output. And I actually think it did have quite a lot of the charm of the first film. And a new entry, number one, and number one in America is Joker, Folly Adder. So let me just do some correspondence. Yes, please. And then you can pick it all up. Yeah, Rob go ahead. says, uh, I hated the overall direction this film took. The, the original movie was an interesting idea in setting up a path for Arthur to start to transform into a fully-fledged villain. A Joker begins, if you will, and this film smashed all that original promise to pieces. Mark mentions he was unsure how fans of the character would react, and I have been a fan of the comic book creation since I got into comics as a much younger vanguardiste. I believe the reason I and fans adore the character is that he is pure psychopathy with only chaos in mind. Uh, there are no moral questions or hints of inter internal struggle, just carnage. This film should have embraced that and continued the steps to grow into that full-blown creation without spoiling it. Clearly, J-Fad, as I don't think we should be calling it, did the exact opposite. Um, this from Jer Leggett. It could be Ger, but I'm going with Jer. Dear Ha and Lee, I found it fascinating that the movie appeared to hold contempt towards both the original fan base and its detractors. Todd Phillips is a talented filmmaker, but in recent years seems to have the deafness in his work of an angry uncle ranting on Facebook about a subject he's watched one documentary about and declared himself an expert of. His promo for Joker saw him call out woke culture for making comedy impossible these days, a theory that I think has been thoroughly debunked since. This round of promo and the resulting movie seems determined to deconstruct and demythologize the Joker itself. The story being set in Gotham appears incidental, as Phillips implies the Joker is little more than a lunatic turned legend imagined by cable news and lost soul followers, who appear to be stand-ins for the incels the original movie was accused by many of platforming. What results is an empty, bitter and soulless experience that feels created out of little more than spite alone. Uh, Alan Shepard in Cheltenham. Uh, says, Dear Batman and Robin, you choose. Anyone who expects to be expects it to be a crash bang wallop superhero Marvel Universe, I know it's DC style movie, obviously hasn't seen the first one and is in the wrong theatre. It's extremely daring and I can see why lots of people won't like it. It's unremittingly dark. Such violence as takes place is pretty graphic and ultimately it's a tragedy of a man adrift, maybe or maybe not partly redeemed by a doomed love story. Not a masterpiece, but a courageous and effective follow-up and a film that will grow in reputation as the years pass. Thank you, Alan. And one more. Uh, this from Josiah Omotosho. First time emailer, Vanguard Easter, double colonial commoner, born and raised in Nigeria, now living in the United States. Jo Josiah says, in his effusively positive review of Heaven's Gate, a film I know Mark despises, but bear with me, mm -hmm. Los Angeles Times uh, critic Kevin Thomas wrote, and I quote, I don't think in 20 years of movie reviewing I've ever been so totally alone. End of quote. Having watched Joker Folie Adder, I relate highly to Thomas's words all those decades ago. Not only did I love this movie, but it is easily one of my favourites of the year. Joining other more positively received pictures such as Monkey Man, American Fiction, Dune Part 2 and Late Night with the Devil. All the things people seem to find galling about this film, I find enrapturing. Its complete lack of regard for comic book lore in favour of telling a self-contained story on its own terms, more of that, please. It's occasionally unwieldy veering from golden age animation to prison film to musical to courtroom drama and back, propulsive. It's seeming build up to an eruptive and action packed finale that never comes, subversive. And its insistence that Arthur Fleck is not rewarded for his violent proclivities, no matter how justified they may seem, admirable. I think in 20 years we'll look back on this film and go, well, that kind of got a raw deal, didn't it? But until that day, if it ever comes, I'm okay with being, as Kevin Thomas put it, totally alone. Hello to Jason, all the production team, God Emperors of the podcasting landscape. Long may their benevolent reign continue. So that'll be uh, Joker 2, Folie at number one. Yes. I mean, you're not alone. There are people who like it. it the film has proved incredibly divisive. And um, as I, when I was reviewing it, I said that I thought that may well be the case. I thought that a lot of people you know, wouldn't like it. And I also said, and I hope I expressed this correctly, that whilst I was watching it, I thought this shouldn't work. And yet, it's almost in spite of itself, it did. And I came out thinking that's actually, I think, and I think you agreed with me, it is a more interesting film, and for, and for my mind, a better film than the first Joker. Um, 
ju- earlier on this week, I went to a screening of Salem's Lot, and I saw Kim Newman, who, of course, you know, Kim is the, the you know the great horror maven, and um, he uh, wrote all the secrets of cinemas uh, with me. He was the, the lead writer on that thing, and Kim's got very very good judgment. And we started talking about we hadn't seen each other for a few weeks, and I said, "What did you make of Folly Adieu?" Because I kind of liked it. And he said, yeah, so did I. And I thought, okay, well, Kim's judgment is, I understand where Kim's coming from. And he quite often has got very, very good judgment. And I remember Fire Walk With Me, the only people that liked Fire Walk With Me when it came out was me, Nigel Floyd, Alan Jones, and Kim Newman. I'm not saying that everyone is going to get won over to Folie à deux, but I think it is, I think its divisiveness is actually a strength. I, I do understand that a lot of people will dislike it for, you know, for entirely legitimate reasons. I thought it it went, it was unexpected. It did something that was very, very audacious, and it doesn't all work. But enough of it does that I, I respect it, and I, I've got more out of it than I did out of Joker. And, I you know, I like Joker. Somebody said, um, oh, yeah, well, you said it's better than Joker, but you hated Joker. Um no, I didn't. I like Joker. In fact, I went back to my Observer review in which they do stars, which is always a shame, and it's a four-star review. I didn't dislike Joker. I just like Folly Adder more because it's. I think it's doing something really adventurous. I mean, I am, of course... How many a, stars would this one get, would you think? Well, I think if... I mean, I don't like doing stars, but I think this would this would still be a four, but I think it's a, you know, I think it's... I mean, this is why stars are stupid, because there's no nuance you know, there's absolutely no nuance. It just, it's just a thing. And they, they are, the way it worked with the Observer was they, we agreed they wouldn't do them in the paper, but they would do them on the internet because it's clickbait. Um, but the point I was making was that I didn't dislike the Joker. I had reservations about it, but I didn't dislike mm. it. But I think this is a more nuanced film. I think it's a more interesting film. I think it's a more ambitious film. And I think it's, um, I think it's the better film, but I, I absolutely respect everybody's right to detest it in the same way that I respect people's right to love Megalopolis. I do wish the people who loved Megalopolis would t- <laughs> respect your right to not like it. Which would not just my right. We respect anyone's right to not like it, but Hey, you know, yeah, it's uh, you know, film fandom. It's a weird world. <laughs> 